In this ICFT++ example, we're going to demonstrate the flow and heat transfer inside an aircraft cabin using the new Integral Computational Multiphysics Advanced User Interface, or ICMP AUI. Before diving into this example, I will briefly cover the new features and components of the ICFT++ AUI for the first time user. For a more in-depth understanding of the ICMP AUI features, common across all Metacom software, please click on the ICMP AUI demo link popping up on the left side of the video, or refer to the ICMP AUI section of your ICFT++ documentation. This ICFT++ interface is composed of the menu bar, where the mouse is currently moving, the toolbar, which has the shortcuts to the commonly used functions and visualization controls, the canvas, in which a geometry or solution is displayed, and the notebook, currently showing that you are in a CFT++ simulation mode. Within the notebook, ICFT++ has its action tree or setup wizard, which will guide you logically through the various steps of the problem setup, and one or more information trees. In this case, the groups and boundary families tree, and the boundary conditions tree. Corresponding to each action item in the action tree is its action panel, where the user is given the relevant choices based upon choices made in previous and current panels. All panels are dockable and resizable. In this example, we'll be simulating the flow and heat transfer inside a simplified aircraft cabin. The effect of solar radiation through the cabin window and the conjugate heat transfer between the flow and the seats are also included. We begin the setup by first identifying the working directory. Once this is done, we will go ahead and press OK at the bottom of the panel to confirm and proceed. We are immediately prompted with the question of whether or not to create an egroupsin.bin file. This will allow us to visualize the different cell groups contained within our CFT++ grid files. We will say yes to this option and proceed. We are then brought to the load input and grid info action panel. Here we will choose to analyze the grid files, read in the BC family file, as well as the cell groups file, which currently contains two cell groups, and we will also choose to load in the interior BC file. So we'll click yes for this option. Once this is done, we will press OK at the bottom to proceed. After the grid analysis is completed, a grid information panel will be prompted. Here you will have information about the different cell types contained within this grid, as well as the number of cells of each cell type. Also included will be all the boundary families in the grid, and the number of external BC and internal BC faces associated with each boundary family. We can press OK to close this panel. Next we are brought to the cell types and volumes action panel. This panel will be already filled in for you based on the information acquired from the grid analysis in the previous step. We can press OK at the bottom to confirm and proceed. In the general problem definition panel we will choose to solve a conjugate heat transfer problem. Once this is set, we can press OK at the bottom of the panel. In the CFD problem definition panel, we will choose a fluid type of gas. We will choose to solve for only a single species of gas. The flow will be compressible and the type of gas will be perfect gas and the flow speed will be mostly below Mach 0.5. The flow will be viscous as well as turbulent and we will also choose to solve radiation heat transfer in the problem so we will select yes for this option. The simulation type will be steady state. Once these options have been set we can press OK at the bottom. In the additional specifications panel we will choose not to add any additional specifications, so we can keep it in its default state and press OK at the bottom to proceed. In the Equation Properties panel, the solution methodology we will choose as pressure-based. We'll keep the default turbulence model as two equation realizable K epsilon. We will choose not to solve for passive scalars. And for the radiation model, we will choose the discrete ordinance model, or DO. Once this has been set, we can press OK at the bottom to proceed. 
in the physics source terms panel, we will choose not to add any physics source terms for this problem. So we can keep it in its default state and press OK at the bottom to proceed. In the reference quantities panel, we will choose to solve this problem in dimensional mode using SI units. So we can press OK at the bottom to proceed. Next in the fluid properties primary phase action panel, we will enter a base pressure value of 7.9 E4 pascals. We will include buoyancy effects for this problem. So we'll click yes for this option. The type of gravity source term will be regular. We will choose not to recalculate the bulk density. For the dimensional gravity components, we will enter minus 9.81 meters per second squared in the y direction. The gravity reference point can be kept in its default state of 0, 0, 0. The bulk density we will enter as 0 0.938539 kilograms per meter cubed. Once this is set, we can press OK at the bottom to proceed. Next, in the Select Solid Groups action panel, we will need to identify which one of our two cell groups is the solid group in this computation. Turning to the canvas, we can first go over some basic mouse controls. With the left mouse button, we can rotate the grid in the canvas. Holding down the middle mouse button, we can translate. And holding down the right mouse button and moving the mouse up and down, we can zoom in and out. In addition to this, if we go to the Boundary Families tree, we can choose to hide and show the grid by clicking on the grid icon. We can also choose to shade the grid or put shade and wireframe. In addition to this, we will expand the groups tree and we will need to identify which cell group is the solid group in this problem. For this problem, we want to set the seats and the seat stands as the solid group. So let's first highlight each group with a single left mouse click. Highlighting group number one shows that it is the exterior of the aircraft cabin. Highlighting group number two shows that it is the seats and seat stands. Based on this, we've identified that it is group number two that will be the solid group in this problem. So moving back to our select solid groups action panel, we will check group number two and press OK at the bottom of this panel to confirm and proceed. Next, we're taken to the Solid Properties action panel. Here, we will need to set the solid properties of our solid group. For the solid type, we will choose isotropic and constant properties. Next, for the solid properties, an information set has already been created for the single group that will be a solid in this problem we will highlight this information set with a single left mouse click. Here we will choose a solid from our solid properties database. We will choose pure aluminum and this since is already highlighted we can press OK at the bottom to confirm this. We will enter an average temperature of 293 Kelvin. This will automatically enter the solid properties of pure aluminum at 293 Kelvin into our information set for our solid group. One thing that we will change is the initial temperature which we will enter as 293 Kelvin as well. Once this is done we can press OK at the bottom to confirm and proceed. 
Next, we are taken to the discrete ordinance radiation model controls. Here, we will not choose to deactivate the Manning Energy Equation source term, so we will keep this option as no. For updating the radiation equation, we will do so every fluid time step. For the type of phase function, we will choose isotropic. For the delta Eddington forward scattering fraction, we will keep it at the default zero value. For the number of divisions in the polar angle, we will choose two. For the number of divisions in the azimuthal angle, we will choose four. This will not be a file-based temperature dependent property. Radiation absorption coefficient, we will enter as one E minus four. The radiation scattering coefficient we'll leave at the default zero, and the refractive index we will also leave at the default 1.0. Once this is done, we'll press OK at the bottom to confirm and proceed. Next, we will enter the initial conditions for the fluid group. We will do so for the entire domain. The variable to use will be temperature-based. We will create a new information set for these initial conditions. This can be done by clicking with the left mouse button on the plus sign. Once the information set has been created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click, as well as checking it. The static pressure, we will enter a value of 0.0. .0. The static pressure value will be relative to the base pressure value entered in the fluid properties panel. Since we entered a base pressure of 7.9 E4, Pascals, the static pressure will also be 7.9 E4. Static temperature, we will enter a value of 293 Kelvin. And for the XYZ velocities, we will enter 0.1 meters per second for each. The turbulence quantities, we will leave in their default state. We will initialize them at a later stage of this setup. Once these have been entered, we will press OK at the bottom to confirm and proceed. Next, we will apply the boundary conditions to our boundary families. First, we will highlight BC number one with a single left mouse click. This is the symmetry boundary. Then we will hold down the control button and also highlight with a single left mouse click BCs number three and four. All three of these boundaries will have the same boundary condition applied to them. So we can apply the boundary condition all at once. We will hold down the left mouse button and drag and drop over to the symmetry boundary condition category. And we will apply a symmetry boundary condition to all three of these boundaries. Next, with the single left mouse click, we will highlight boundary family number two, the floor. And once again, we will hold down the control button and then highlight with a single left mouse click boundary families five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, and 17. All of these will have the same boundary conditions applied to them. Holding down the left mouse button we will drag and drop over to the wall boundary condition category. Here we will apply a viscous wall. Wall integration will be wall function. The wall heat transfer will be isothermal. It will not be a profile based temperature so we will leave this option unchecked. The wall motion type will be stationary with respect to mesh motion. Since there is no mesh motion, that means that the wall will be stationary. We will add a new information set for the wall temperature. Once this new information set has been created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click as well as checking it. The wall temperature we will enter as 297 Kelvin. Once this is done, we can press OK at the bottom to confirm and proceed. Next, with a single left mouse click, we will highlight boundary family 11, the inlet. Holding down the left mouse button, we will drag and drop this into the open boundary condition category. For the boundary condition subgroup, we will choose inflow and outflow. The type of information available, we will choose primitive variables. 
And for the applied condition type, we will select temperature and velocity at inflow and pressure at outflow. We will need to create a new information set for this boundary condition. The previously created information set was for the initial conditions and we will be entering different values than that. Once a new information set is created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click as well as checking it. For the static pressure, we will enter 0.0, making it the same as the base pressure applied in the fluid properties panel. The static temperature, we will enter as 293 Kelvin. For the X velocity, we will enter minus 0.5 meters per second. The Y and Z velocities can be kept at zero. Once again, we will be keeping the turbulence quantities in their default state. We will be initializing them at a later stage of the setup. Once this is done, we can press OK to confirm. Next, we will highlight boundary family 13, the outlet, with a single left mouse click. Then we will hold down the left mouse button and drag and drop over to the open boundary conditions category. For this boundary family, we will be applying a subgroup of outflow only. We will be imposing a condition at the boundary, so we will keep this as checked. The type of information will be pressure, and the pressure type will be a back pressure imposition. We will create a new information set for this boundary condition. Once this new information set has been created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click, as well as checking it. The back pressure we will enter as 0.0. .0. Once again, this is relative to the base pressure applied in the fluid properties panel, so in essence, this back pressure will be 7.9 E4 pascals. The pressure in position will be characteristics based. We will be applying the sensitized to gravity modifier. This option is activated since the gravity vector is not perpendicular with respect to the surface, but rather parallel, and thus the pressure on the boundary will have a hydrostatic component that needs to be removed. This option is activated since the gravity vector is not perpendicular with respect to the surface, but rather parallel, and thus the pressure on the boundary will have a hydrostatic component. For the mode, we will choose integral we will add a new information set. Once this new information set is created, we can highlight it with a single left mouse click as well as checking it. Here we will keep the default value for the reference point at 000. This is the same as the reference point specified for gravity in the fluid properties panel. Once this is done, we can press OK to confirm and proceed. Next, we will highlight boundary families 14 and 18, holding down the control button and single left mouse clicking. Once these are highlighted, we will hold down the left mouse button and drag and drop over to the zonal boundary conditions category. Here we will select a patched only zonal connection type. We will not be applying an offset. We will also not have an alternate. For the zonal interface condition, we will apply conjugate heat transfer. The interface type will be fluid solid. The wall integration type will be wall function on the fluid side. For these boundaries, we will apply a buffer layer. We'll create a new information set for the buffer layer. Once this new information set has been created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click as well as checking it. Here the buffer layer will have a thermal conductivity of 0.1. The thickness will be 70 minus 3 meters. Once this has been applied, we can confirm an exit by pressing the OK button at the bottom. Next we will highlight boundary families 15 and 19. Single left mouse click, holding down the control button, and another single left mouse click. Once these are highlighted, we will hold down the left mouse button and drag and drop over to the zonal boundary conditions category.
Here we will also apply a patched only zonal connection type. Once again, we will not have an offset, nor will we apply an alternate. For the zonal interface condition, we will choose conjugate heat transfer. It will be a fluid solid interface type. And on the fluid side, we will use a wall function integration type. We will leave all other modifiers unchecked. In this particular boundary, we do not have a buffer layer. So we can press OK at the bottom to confirm and proceed. For our last boundary family, BC16, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click and then drag and drop this over to the wall boundary conditions category. For this boundary family, we will be choosing a wall type of solid side and a heat transfer type of adiabatic. Once this is done, we'll press OK to confirm and proceed. Now we can check to make sure that all boundary families have boundary conditions applied to them by going to the boundary families tree in a notebook. There should be a green check mark next to each boundary family to confirm that a boundary condition has been applied. You can also hover over the boundary family in this tree to check the type of condition applied to it. Once this is confirmed, we can press OK at the bottom of the boundary conditions action panel to proceed. Next, we will be applying the discrete ordinance boundary conditions. We will do so first for the window. We will highlight this with a single left mouse click. Next, we are going to drag and drop it over to the radiative wall, constant properties, and solar discrete ordinance boundary condition. Here, we will create a new information set by selecting the plus sign. Once this has been created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click as well as checking it. Here we will keep the default wall emissivity of 1.0. We'll keep the wall reflectance at the default value of 0. For the solar heat flux, we will enter 500. For the solar direction, we will enter minus 0 0.707 for each direction. Once this is done, we can press OK to confirm. Next, we will highlight with a single left mouse click boundary family 14, the seats. Then we will hold down the control button and highlight with a single left mouse click boundary family 18. Then we will hold down the left mouse button and drag and drop these into radiative wall constant property. Here we will create a new information set. Once this is created, we will highlight it with a single left mouse click as well as checking it. We will be applying a wall emissivity of 0 0.9 and wall reflectance of 0 0.1. And then we'll press OK to confirm and proceed. Next, we will highlight the rest of the boundary families. We will start with boundary family 1 with a single left mouse click. Then hold down the control button. We will highlight with single left mouse clicks boundary family 2 three, four, five, six. We will skip seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, skip 14, 15, 16, 17, and 19, skipping 18. Then holding down the left mouse button, we will drag and drop this into the radiative wall concert property DO model boundary condition category. Here we will create a new information set. We will not use the same one used for boundary families 14 and 18. We will highlight this new information set, the DO model underscore wall parameters underscore two, as well as checking it. 
and we'll keep the default values of wall emissivity of 1.0 and wall reflectance of 0. We'll press OK to confirm and proceed. Once this is done, we can press OK at the bottom to proceed. In the Zonal Connectivity Options panel, we will choose not to activate flux stitching. We can keep all other options in their default state and press OK. In the Turbulence Control Action panel, we will once again keep the default settings and press OK. Now in the Turbulence Initialization tool, we will initialize the turbulence values for our two primitive variable information sets. Primitive variables underscore 1 is the information set used by the initial conditions. Primitive variables underscore 2 is the information set used by the inlet boundary. We will first highlight with a single left mouse click primitive variables underscore 1. Next we will with a right mouse click bring up the calculator. The turbulence length scale will be known for this calculation. We'll keep that as yes. For the free stream turbulence level, we will enter 0.05. For the length scale, we will keep at the default 0.01. For the free stream velocity, we will enter 1 meter per second. And then we will compute. This will give us some values for K and Epsilon and the approximate mu t over mu ratio based on these values. We'll press OK to confirm this and OK to apply this to the information set. Next we will highlight the second information set with a single left mouse click and bring up the calculator with a right mouse click. The length scale will also be known for this calculation. The free stream turbulence level we will keep at 0 0.05. The length scale we will keep at default 0 0.01 and the free stream velocity which is taken from the information set is 0 0.5 meters per second. We will compute based on these values. In the subsequent panel we were given the computed k and epsilon values as well as the mu to mu ratio based on this. We will press OK to confirm this. OK again to apply this to our information set. Once this is done we can press OK at the bottom of this panel to proceed. We will choose not to use the help set numerics wizard for the setup of this problem. We will press OK to proceed. We will keep the Riemann solver controls in their default state and press OK to proceed. For the simulation strategy, we will enter a number of global time steps as 1000 and then press OK to proceed. In the time integration controls for the global time step type, we will choose auto. We'll choose the auto time step type as medium. We will include time step in extra equations, yes. And the auto time step factor, we will choose 5.0. We will choose to ramp the core number for the local time step from 1 to 25 over the default ramp schedule. The coupled solver under relaxation we will reduce to 0 0.25. Once this is done we can press OK to confirm and proceed. In the spatial discretization panel we will expand the advanced controls. We will choose as a base polynomial type as centroidal. This will bring up a prompt recommending the use of the volume weighted face average option in conjunction with the centroidal base polynomial type. We will choose yes for this option and allow the AUI to change the face pressure interpolation option to volume weighted face average. Once this is done, we can press OK to proceed. We will keep the default neutral plot file options outputs and press OK. In the subsequent prompt, we will choose to write out to the neutral plot files input file as well as copying to the plot output input file. We'll press OK to confirm and proceed. 
In the probing and output files action panel, we will keep the default output and press OK. Finally, we are able to save the input file as well as saving the PS file. Since this computation includes the discrete ordinance model, we have a separate input file for the discrete ordinance conditions that will be saved in the mcfd.ps file. We will choose to run the CFT++ computation. We'll press OK to continue with the computation. All files will be written to the current working directory. For more information about post-processing and visualization, please refer to the post-processing section of this example. Thank you.